Hi, everyone. Welcome to this 15-minute Friday Flash. I'm Lynn Hunsaker of Clear Interaction Continuum. Today, we're talking about four keys to smoothing silos. A business silo is anything that should be connected, but isn't connected. Silos are what we complain about to coworkers and others. Anything where the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. Anything where the cart's before the horse. Silos are what customers complain about on social media, to coworkers, friends, family, and acquaintances, and to contact centers. Anything that doesn't make sense to them. Silos are expensive. They cost us a lot in time and effort and waste. Silos cost us a lot to stem churn in resources dedicated perpetually to personnel, technologies, and programs in customer success, customer experience, customer service, CRM, loyalty, and the like. All of these currently necessary efforts could be relieved to a great extent if we could smooth silos. And if we they were relieved of the preventable issues, they could focus a lot more on value creation. Silos are probably the biggest root cause of churn among customers, churn among employees, and churn among agencies, channel partners, and other groups that we depend upon. Here's a list of 10 silos that impact customer experience and employee experience. Data silos happen when you have mismatching data or data in incompatible systems. System silos happen when you have standalone or incompatible technologies. Process silos are apparent when execution is complicated. Channel silos are visible when the user's experience differs by platform or service or source. For example, marketing channels, media channels, information channels, sales channels, delivery channels, and support channels, all needing to be coordinated within and among them. Organizational silos are all too common with lack of sharing, transparency, coordination, and collaboration. Assumption silos happen when there are different views and ownership levels across people and groups. Vision silos are apparent when someone is out of sync with the hand that feeds you. Goal silos are seen when outcomes are not congruent with intentions. Metric silos exist when reality is overstated, momentum is masked. Handoff silos are seen when the quality of or timing of work output doesn't match the recipient's needs. In this list, the first five are operational silos. They're the structure we set up to manage our business. The other five are execution silos. These are culture and personality inclinations. Most people think you can solve the operational silos with technologies, and that's true to an extent. But all of the operational silos are hindered or helped by the execution silos. This is true both in the setup of technology solutions for operational silos and in your ongoing use and daily decision-making around the operational silo areas. For these reasons, it's vital to thoroughly explore the execution silos in your world. It's essential to proactively smooth these execution silos in your world. Over the next several weeks, I'll talk about each of these silos and how you can smooth them. That's right, each of us can make inroads in execution silos. We can also learn how to influence others to smooth these 10 silos. In fact, a great deal of silo smoothing is possible through grassroots efforts. And it's even better when silo smoothing is proactive from the top down, as well as the bottom up. If you're in a customer intelligence uh, area, such as marketing, customer experience, customer success, and so forth, you're in a situation where you can do that uh, influencing, and here's how. Did you know there are four universal keys to silo smoothing? The first step is to broaden perspectives. Make sure outside-in thinking is more than skin deep. An outside-in perspective is a customer experience context. What are customers feeling, thinking, and hoping? An outside-in context gives us a broader perspective. 
make sure you and your company see your work with substance and outside in context. Not just the feel good customer comments and stories, but the things that customers are grappling with, the realities that they face, the things that are on their wish list. Make sure these penetrate your whole organization, every nook and cranny. To broaden perspectives, share customers' comments and stories with all employees at every opportunity. Do this in a wide variety of formats and media and spokespersons. For example, equip your supervisors with uh, something that they can share in the beginning of their staff meetings once a month at least. Uh, use your intranet, table tents, uh, posters on the walls, um, messages um, for your executives, uh, things that they can weave into the various presentations and point out how each uh, featured comment and story applies to every functional area. So if you're speaking to engineers, how does it apply to them? What can they do about it? If you're talking to uh, the legal group or the HR group, how can they take um, note of the customer comment or story and uh, do something different in the everyday choices they have as well as their strategies to uh, be more in tune with customers. The second step here is to expand motivations. Show everyone what's in it for me from their viewpoint. For example, what is the size of the business at risk? This is speaking manager's language when you can show how much money could be diverted from wasteful consequences of poor process outcomes to higher value budgets and salaries and profit sharing. Build on the positives among who gets people ahead in your company. Modify the negatives among what gets people ahead or not. These are actually the heart of your culture, whether it's at the group level or at your company level. What makes people tick? Uh, what's at the heart of their thinking and their doing? Their various decisions throughout the day. Apply voice of the customer to the customer lifetime value and operational data. Find patterns in customer experience data that tell compelling stories. Make sure motivation is putting customers' interests first. For example, you may have motivation uh, programs such as uh, profit sharing or recognition or bonus. And if you have figured out how you can put customers' interests first in those criteria and make it quite clear what people need to do to um, emulate that broadened perspective and uh, customers' first motivations, then you'll be uh, building that in to smoothing silos. The third step for smoothing silos is to nurture collaboration, empower employees to help one another, incentivize managers to coordinate with others, celebrate cross-functional progress, Reward teams for prevention of issues. It's often uh, very hard to identify and acknowledge areas where things were prevented. And I found that it's best to allow employees to self-report what they're preventing and actually give greater accolade, accolades to those things in comparison to the heroics and the uh, saving the day type of things. If you want to build in silo smoothing to your culture, you've got to reward teams for preventing issues. The fourth step is build in universality. When assigning a task or embarking on a project, first ask, who else uses this or who should use it? What can we learn from them and what can we share with them? How can we make the outcome seamless for both customers and employees? Use tools such as interrelationship diagraphs, fishbone diagrams, reframing to see the big picture, and other systems thinking and quality tools. Get maximum return on investment by building in interchangeability, building in transparency, building in free flow of information, accountability, and seamlessness. Next week, I'll show you how Interaction Bridges helps you smooth assumption, vision, and handoff silos. This is a technique that's quick to learn. You can use it to navigate personality gaps in your interactions. It's a way to quickly leverage what you have in common with anyone to gain cooperation mutually. 
These topics and many related gems are available now in small bites, five minutes, 15 minutes, and 40 minute formats. Interactive templates, exercises, and discussions help you pick up new habits. The Clear Action Value Exchange is like a 24 seven mentor that you can tap into on the go. Take a look at the Clear Action Value Exchange at clearaction.com. See you here for next week's Friday Flash on Interaction Bridges. Thank you.